What's up, what's up? Welcome back. Today we have a live feeding for the juveniles. It's going to be, let's just say, a continuation of a new introduction of new species, which will be sort of the theme for the next couple of months of the winter, uh, before winter hits, and we won't be able to source too much of live feeding, you know, for them. So anyway, variety is key, my friends, by the way. Uh, a lot of questions that I'm gonna try to answer real quick today on do's and what's and how and why's and uh, basically the method as I say it science behind the reasoning behind doing what I'm doing um, as you know I have built these fish tanks to replicate the you know, natural habitat where these fish come from even though these fish have been bred in the captivity in pet shops anyway um, the idea of basically bringing nature indoors is where I derive you know not only the concept the look but also the method behind how I uh, sort of, you know, allowed the fish to live out their life as in fullest, fullest of the spectrum. Um, the sourcing of food, uh, you know, straight from the creek or river, what have you, out, out of the wild, those poses, you know, obviously, you know, some kind of uh, risks as far as to me. You know, I could fall in a river or something like that. As far as them, no, no such chance. You know, parasite and all that stuff talk. Believe me, in 40 some years of doing aquatic uh, adventures, this is the only way I source food and take care of my fish. Um, never bought any flakes or anything like that. It's nonsense, you know, this is food that you can't even sustain. You don't know what it's from, you don't know what's in it. You go outside in the garden, you can find everything they need. Not to mention that, yeah, it is the best source, the best way, and it provides not only, you know, best nutrition for the physical development but behavioral development as well so the pig can actually learn collaborate and uh, have a better greater chance of survival as a cohesive unit than uh, individual even the strongest individual will get picked off and killed become food for someone else but as a pack they're unmatched anyway so furthermore about what are we gonna do with these uh, piranha packs that are growing well this Right there is the project, 1,200 gallon, uh, 1,200 gallon enclosure that will provide the new home for the adults, 10 of them, and few of the juveniles. What I mean few is not the full pack. There will be too many fish, in my opinion, again, crowding that 1,200 gallon even. So I'm gonna few, pick out a few healthiest, biggest, strongest, you know, individuals that can survive the migration and obviously the scrutiny from the adult pack as you saw, even the large uh, mama parama, which joined the pack uh, as last member, is a newcomer, was a newcomer, and she had to, you know, let's just say, stand her ground not to become food herself. So in this case, with these smaller, weaker individuals, there's always chance for a negative outcome or undesirable outcome. I'm sure a few of the piranha keepers can attest to it. Uh, piranhas are not the easiest to keep. However, as you can see, my piranhas are acclimated and accept me as uh, their caregiver. Therefore, you know, displaying them is a little bit easier. And as far as, yeah, acclimated, <laughs> displaying. As far as displaying the you know, juveniles, it's been really gratifying. They are super attentive, very exciting. As you can see, they have no fear. Coming up to the glass now. If you look back to the you know previous videos, you could see they were much more timid, um, maybe less organized. Therefore, you know a little more intimidated, much more intimidated. Anyway, this is faded away with the implementing a repetition of my technique, which is commotion and then reward, usually after a water change or something like that. Hey, you know I'm not saying I'm trying to change your mind here. I'm just telling you what's on mine. So simply, uh, if you may. Leave a comment, question, it's all good. If you're going to be derogatory, I'm gonna remove your comment or whatnot, or just bombard you back, which probably isn't the best idea. That's how I'm <coughs> getting my uh, hiney whooped by YouTube, but that's another story. Anyway, I appreciate you guys' support, and uh, without further ado, let's get the juveniles their well-deserved dinner. We'll see what happens. Okay. Live feeding for the rescue pack and uh, introducing same praise as the adults last time, which is the uh, drum or sheephead local name for this specimen. And uh, without further ado, sheephead. 
Red for Juvenile, Red Bella Toronto. He's in. He managed to totally evade them. Oh, they may turn on each other, that would be something. They're seeking now, looking. Yeah, any weak individual might get it. That's just how it is among piranhas. But now they are in search, they can sense, they can smell, and they can definitely feel the electric impulses of the heartbeat as they are closing in on their prey, well hidden below the stomp. There you go. I think they might have figured out which part of the tank he's in. Now they're just gonna locate him. I can't even tell where he's at. There it is. There's contact. He's coming out to the right corner, front center. Big prey. He's trying to evade him. Teamwork only will prevail. They have to take out the fins and slow him down. Yeah, they're trying. They really are. Fantastic hunt, my friends. Resilient, good sized prey posing a challenge for the juveniles. But the juvenile rescues. You momentarily evade them again. Managed to hide somewhere. Let's see. They know food's in the tank now. Back to regrouping. Scouring the full tank now. Somehow the drum has made it find a refuge. Managed to find refuge temporarily. However, he did survive the initial introduction of the piranha pack. I see him, he's stuck head down and behind the stump, so that's why they can't figure him out. Aerodynamic pack, as you can see, they're scouring, height, you know, looking. If only a few got a bite. It'll take a minute. to feeding at the surface now so you see they're attending to the surface quite a bit anticipating me dropping something <laughs> or holding they gotta regroup again Moved. Did you guys see that? The strength of this fish. Oh, oh. Still evading the attack until they get hold of them several at a time. There you go. That's the moment. That's the moment. They have to all gain up. He still managed to pull away. There you go. That's the moment, my friends demobilized all pack joining in ripping shredding and tearing sharing the prey and the hunt a very very fruitful hunt took them a while but the reward is all worth it my friends, nature provides the best source of food, best nutrition, 
best we can do is share the nature's way. Just coming back after swallowing bites to take out another bite, exchanging, taking turns. Just a pack collaboration, my friends. These guys exchanging a little piece they tore up. That's all that's left from the sheep head. Got quite a mess in the tank again, like I said. That's just how it goes. Nothing pretty about taking down a prey larger than yourself. Still a few pieces left. Almost done. Softening up the skull, the tough part. Tougher part of the of the fish is the skull, and that's what they work on until the end. Relentlessly softening it up, biting, taking nips until there's virtually nothing left, or they leave the carcass behind. All right, I'll let them do their thing. This concludes the juvenile feeding. All right, my friends, <laughs> that really was something, huh? And like I said, not as predictable as we all think. Uh, each one of these sort of occurrences may bring in different sort of aspects of difficulty or challenges for the pack. And if the pack isn't really collaborating together, it's a bunch of waste of time, not to mention some of them may become victims of the chase, as it, uh, it does happen in nature, and I'm sure other piranha keepers can attest to it. So yeah, my friends, I appreciate you stopping by and I invite you for another one. There'll be a whole series of uh, piranha feedings now before the winter sets. So we're beefing them up a little bit. Then we're gonna move into different foods. So we'll always talk about the varieties and the reasons for it, you know, the science behind it. It's not just some uh, figment of my imagination. It simply is nature's way. So I appreciate you stopping by, and again, uh, welcome you to subscribe and uh, hit that like button. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see you on the next one.